So we're working on these cornhole boards and I'm going to recap a little bit of what we've already done. Um, and the first part of this video, you saw me rolling or troweling on a product which was texture medium and then I rolled through with our crocodile roller. So after that dried, um, took this thing outside, got me a hand sander and sanded off what I would say all the rough areas, okay? You're still gonna have some texture. You're still physically going to fill it, but I didn't want anything to be rough. So I took my hand sander outside and we smoothed down this without losing the pattern, okay? Um, wiped it down, cleaned it off really well. And then the next step, um, is I used Bare, uh, their paint and primer all in one. The color is called Broadway, okay, which is basically a black. <laughs> so we're on to the next step of this particular project. And um, the next thing I'm going to do is use some foil adhesive. And both the texture medium and the foil adhesive um, are one of my products. So they're under my brand called Artsyville Embellishments. Uh, so you'll find them on my website. But this is uh, the foil adhesive is the first part um, of creating a foil finish. So I have already poured out um, the foil adhesive onto my tray. Okay, I like using serving trays and covering them with press and seal. Just to me makes a really great um, paint tray. And I'm just using a low nap um, roller. This is like a quarter inch nap roller. And you can see how the foil adhesive looks milky white, but it will dry 100% clear. So we're going to put on 100% coverage with the foil adhesive. So the foils will only transfer where there is foil adhesive. So you want to make sure you've got coverage and that you have good coverage. Um, otherwise, nothing will stick there, okay? And not that I want it thick or dripping by any chance, but you want to make sure you have full coverage. And uh, the foil adhesive, like I said, it goes on milky white. You can pretty much see it pretty well when you're putting it on, especially on a dark surface. And then you have to let this completely dry um, to what's called a firm tack. So that will be somewhere between maybe um, 30 minutes minimum up to maybe an hour or two and it's going to depend on the weather and your environment okay so if you're someplace where it's really humid um, and wet and cold um, you want to let this dry longer to get to the firm tack if you try to go too fast okay I think my can is getting a little old and there are just little bits and pieces that keep pulling out okay so the other thing is um, now I've gone that direction I'm going to go back the other way because not only do you want to make sure you have 100% coverage but if you apply this randomly in multiple directions going every way you can you could possibly see that telegraph through your foil so you want to kind of come through and do a final um, soft roll all in one direction. And then uh, once I'm done with that, uh, just because I'm at a weird angle here, it's hard for me to get my arm that direction, but um, I'm definitely gonna go the uh, correct way. Uh, but we're gonna let this dry for probably about an hour or so, and it will dry completely clear. And at that point, we'll come back and we'll transfer our foil. So, okay, we are back and the um, foil adhesive has had plenty of time to dry. Like I said, I recommend no less than an hour or so, but I think we actually went overnight here, okay? So we have plenty of dry time and you can tell now that it's dried clear. So it looks shiny, but it looks black again and still that milky white. And now we've got this beautiful silver foil that we're going to transfer to the surface. So just a quick little bit about foils. Um, the side that you're looking at right now is actually the plastic. The foil is on the back side. So when you're working with foils, always make sure that you've got the bright and shiny side facing straight up and not try to come here and put the silver down because it's just plastic getting stuck to really sticky adhesive, okay? 
Uh, say, well, let me grab one other tool we need. Okay, I got that. Okay, um, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can roll it off the whole roll. You can crinkle it up. And I'm gonna show you guys how to actually keep it on the roll, uh, which is sometimes kind of cool because you can wait to cut it until you get to the end, especially when you got long, longer strips. And I'm also gonna show you how we're going to um, piece this together because we're gonna have to put a couple of sections together. So I'm gonna try to get this started here and straight if possible. And I can lay it that way, okay? So it's not like getting stuck. And just get this started by smoothing it down with a terry rag. And then I can pull it the rest of the way out and get this stuck on there, okay? And then cut which sometimes it's nice if you're doing a big area to be able to do this, okay, instead of having to cut it off first because when you're doing it by yourself, um, it could fly everywhere, especially if you have a lot of air movement in the room. And I definitely didn't get this on here straight, so we're just going to lift it up and put it back down again, okay, and get rid of some of my air bubbles and wrinkles. But don't, don't, get, don't get too concerned about air bubbles and wrinkles. Um, they're not going to ruin anything, okay? It's just going to, to me, add a lot more character for you. Uh, first thing I do, though, is rub it with a terry rag. And you can put some pressure on here and rub it with a little bit of pressure and see how much you have actually transferred. And you can start to determine, is that enough? Um, because you're not always looking for 100%. And I have black underneath on purpose because I want the black to show. Now, if that's not enough coverage, then we can grab a scrubber brush. And these are just plastic bristles, okay? It's a stiff brush. And the one thing I want to show you guys is I'm staying off this edge because if I go ahead and transfer all the way to that edge, I'll have a perfect straight line, and I don't want that. So I'm going to scrub. And you notice I'm going with the linear length of this board. And I'm trying to stay pretty straight back and forth. Because if you come in here and you do circular motions, you might see that in your transfer, OK? So just go back and forth. And then again, you can peek and determine if you're getting enough coverage. If not, lay that foil right back down there. It'll lay back down where it was, and you can scrub a little harder if you want. And then we're just gonna take what we've got. But ooh, isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh, I'm always still amazed when I remove my foil. Okay, now quickly, you should be able to see there's a pattern on here. It's picking up the crocodile roller pattern. There's not enough foil left there to go ahead and move this to the next section because a lot of it's missing, okay? So you want to grab a fresh piece. Um, and I talk about how foils definitely have um, salvage and waste, okay? Because you're going to be overlapping um, the foils. You're going to have like the salvage here on the edge. So um, don't be too concerned about it. Always make sure you're calculating so that you have maybe at least 15 to 20% extra that you're not trying to have to use every square inch. Um, okay, so again, I always start off with rubbing with a rag especially this area here that I overlapped. Okay, so I've overlapped about an inch. That gives me t an area where I can transition. And I like to transition with a rag because sometimes if you come in here with your scrubber brush, you're now trying to scrub foil over an area that's already transferred with foil, and you could actually scratch it, okay? So just get along that edge. That way you can get the seem to come together without any issue and then you can go back to your scrubber brush and then just check and determine that you've got approximately the same coverage going across you can always pull back slowly and if you feel like you want to add any more foil 
just let it fall back and scrub again wherever it is that you saw that you might want more coverage. Okay. So we've got one last area to finish. And I'm going to seam it towards me. Just because it's going to be easier for me to reach. And once you rub with the terry rag, you're going to know exactly where your seam is. So you know where you have to just rub a little extra hard. Get your seams to come together so that they're not noticeable. And then finish it out. So now you can see how incredibly easy a foil finish is to do. Let me go ahead and tilt this up just a little bit so that you can see that really well. It should be very sh bright and shiny, okay? Um, and once you transfer a foil to your surface, anywhere you can see black, it's still sticky, okay? So you've got to be careful um, with anything that you're not doing like 100% transfer. And even if you did 100% transfer, there's still a chance of still having a little stick, okay? So if we were not going to be pouring um, an epoxy pour over the top of this, we would still need to seal it with something. Okay, I've already mixed up my epoxy, and this is 24 ounces mixed based on the square footage of my surface. This is a two by four board and it's three ounces per square foot. So that gave me 24 ounces. I'm going to take a little bit of what's called diamond dust, okay, to give us a little bit more shimmer and put that in there as well. And a little bit of diamond dust goes a long ways. So it um, doesn't take much at all, okay. And this is just going to give us a nice little extra shimmer um, and then I'm going to mix this up well in here and then we're going to get started on our pour. So when you are mixing up your epoxy, um, again this is the stone coat countertop epoxy that I'm working with, um, you want to mix it for at least two minutes and I was mixing it with a drill, okay, so I have a mixing um, bit for my drill and mixed it for two minutes and now I'm just making sure that all my sides are scraped and the bottom is scraped and all of that beautiful diamond dust um, is all mixed in there okay and we are just going to go ahead and pour this over our surface um, and that's another great thing is when you are doing an epoxy pour over um, foils. You don't have to seal them first, okay? You can just pour it directly over the top. And so this is just going to be um, a very simple pour. I'm not doing anything else to it other than putting in the diamond dust because we have um, we have a lot going on here, okay, with the crocodile roller. So we've already got the crocodile roller, so we've got pattern, we've got color, we have the foil, so we're just doing a real simple pour. Now because I've got foil and texture, um, I'm just going to go ahead and put this on with my hands, but I'm going to go ahead and warm this up here first. So I was just warming up the epoxy a little bit so that it just flows a little smoother with my hand. And I'm going to spread it all over the top. I'm not going to worry about my edges yet. And just try to get it spread out and get it even across the top. And it is a self-leveling leveling product. So you do want to make sure wherever this piece sits, that you have it level okay so you want to get your level out and make sure that your table or wherever you're pouring um, is a level surface because otherwise it's going to all run off one direction or the other okay and that's not good so I'm going to try to keep one hand clean so that I can use my blowtorch and just get this moved onto the surface. Now, even with the crocodile roller on here, 
um, I took the time to uh, sand that design down, that texture down well so that it would not be taking a whole bunch of extra material when I was doing my epoxy coats. Now this is my first coat of epoxy. Um, once this one dries, we'll still be doing what's called a flood coat over the top. So now I'm just taking my hand and I'm running it on the edge just to bring the epoxy down that edge. Um, my edges have been routered with a half inch router bit so that they're rounded top and bottom so the epoxy will just pour off the edges and you don't have to worry about it puddling somewhere. And yes, it's going to pour all over my table, which is covered in plastic. Okay, so one of two things you can do here. You can unglove and reglove. You can wash, wipe your glove off and spray it with some 91% alcohol to clean off your glove, which I'm just going to grab that. And that way I can pick up with my blowtorch without sliming it too bad. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, heat it up, which is basically going to bring all the bubbles to the surface. Now, because I'm doing such a simple pour, because it's just a clear epoxy with the diamond dust, we're basically just going to let it sit here, and I'm going to come back in probably two or three more two or three more minutes, and I'm going to go ahead and use the blowtorch again, and just make sure that I'm bringing any bubbles that may exist up to the surface. I'll do that about three or four times, and then we'll just let this sit and rest. The other thing I will be doing is I'm going to be setting a timer for about an hour from now so that I can come around the edges and pick up any of those drips so that I don't have to do a lot of sanding later. And um, we'll be back, okay, to show you guys the finished product on this. <laughs> 